Okay, guys. So again, welcome. We have some people joining as we go. I'm going to get you started uh, pretty soon because they do have lots to cover and I want to give you a chance to ask some questions as well um, at the end. It's very informal, this session, by the way. So for those of you who are with me right now, uh, feel free to chat a question to me up in the chat box. Take yourself off of mute and ask me a question out loud if you'd like to do that. I will open it up at the end as well for questions, um, a question and answer session at the end, so feel free to wait for that, or um, along the way, it's up to you. Um, I will ask you to probably stay or put yourself on mute, um, just so that there's not any background noise. And for those of you who have a hold or music that plays when you go on mute or something, um, just be aware of that, try to avoid that from happening, so there's no music playing in the background, but other than that, um, feel free to ask your questions along the way. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually get started, um, but I apologize if I'm distracted every once in a while here. Just making sure that everybody else can join. We have about 25 people today joining, so um, it might be a busy session for people arriving, but that's okay. We can accommodate everybody. Um, and just to let you know, most of my attendees today seem to be from Ontario. We do have a couple from Alberta and BC, so I will try to make sure that we cover most of those. Um, provincial requirements for billing as well. Okay, so one last option, you do not need to chat unless you can't see my screen. So my question to you is hopefully you can all see my screen. You should be looking at our learning center up on the screen. There's something kind of moving from the right to the left. Welcome to Practice Perfect University. Gelt started sooner with Quick Start Guide. Um, if you're not able to see that flashing across the screen, give me a quick chat and I will adjust um, to ensure that you can see that. Otherwise, I'm going to assume everybody's all good. Okay. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. So those of you um, with me, again, reminder, just put yourself on mute for now. Just make sure there's no background noise. If you do have a question, unmute yourself to ask me out loud. Chat in the chat box as well as another option. And I'll probably open it up throughout the session, especially at the end, to um, do a little Q&A to make sure that we hopefully address everybody's questions along the way. So welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us on our Webinar Wednesday series. Um, what we're gonna focus on today, just so that you're aware, this is gonna be kind of an overview for Canadian billing in general, the options that are available within Practice Perfect for Canadian billing. And I trust that. Uh, just in case you are calling in from the seat, you just wanna make sure. Hi guys. Uh, just a reminder to put yourself on mute. Perfect. And a reminder that if you're calling in from the States, the U.S., this is not your session. Your session is coming up in two weeks. So this is really just for Canadian billing. Um, and I am going to go over a bunch of different options. Okay. So leading up until now, everybody, this is kind of the training session that I would provide a brand new clinic who is starting um, to use Practice Perfect, let's say, for the first time. And this would be the series... Um, number four in the training session. So sessions number one, two, and three have been our past webinars, and we assume you've already watched those or you've already attended those with me. And those would be things like, how do you set up the software? How do you book an appointment? How do you set up a patient who's connected with an insurance company or different kinds of insurance companies? How do you charge for services? We assume you know all that part by now. So I'll give you probably a quick little uh, preview of it, but we're assuming you're already good with those things. And today's really the focusing on the billing, the kind of final step in the process. So let's talk about a few different kinds of billing that we can do in Canada in general. So hopefully you're all seeing my screen and you're looking at um, a scheduler on the screen right now. And I've set up a whole bunch of fake patients for us to kind of destroy and play around with today. But in general, all across Canada, there are certain kinds of um, billing that we tend to do. And I'm going to focus on the main ones. So typically, there's patients that we call self-pay. We even call them private pay patients, cash pay patients. And those are the types of patients that really don't have any insurance or we're not interested in the insurance that they may have, they're paying out of pocket. So when they show up for their service, we're gonna be charging them. We're probably gonna be taking some money and giving them an invoice or receipt or something right at the time of service. And that we call a private pay patient. Another type of patient, my yellow appointment here, that is extended healthcare. 
And in Canada, that can be um, any kind of private insurance that you have, likely it's through work like Sun Life, Great West Life, um, um, Green Shield, Blue Cross, that kind of stuff. That would be extended health care. And within those extended health care insurance companies, there's two different ways or three different ways to submit through those. There's TELUS submitters. We're going to talk about those. There's um, Provider Connect submitters, and then there's paper submitters. So we'll talk about the difference for those. Then we have our typical workers' comp. We might call it WSAB if we're in Ontario, workers' comp if we're in other provinces, but in general, it's the same thing. It's a work-related injury. And then we have some motor vehicle claims. And usually the cause of that is a motor vehicle action. You might call it um, different acronyms if you're from BC. You might call it from ICBC, MSP, that kind of thing. So, but at the end of the day, it's the cause of the injury and is probably some kind of motor vehicle um, insurance company that you're billing. So because we have all those different types of insurance companies, payers up on the left-hand side is really one of the first places that you have to go to set things up in a certain way. And I've got a few fake payers here to just kind of simulate that setup. So the first payer I have on the list, um, I've called it my Mr. Extended Healthcare TELUS Canada. So that would be a group of insurance companies covered through the TELUS Health Portal. And those would be insurance companies like Sun Life, Great West Life, um, Manulife. Oh my gosh, I can't think of them all. I'll actually show you the list in Practice Perfect. But it, if it's covered through the TELUS portal where you can log on to the TELUS Health portal, um, then we would consider that a TELUS Health Biller. It means you can submit those actually now straight from Practice Perfect. So the main setup that you have to worry about for that particular type of payer is usually your basic name, address, phone number. You definitely need the province and country of Canada. On the right-hand side, it's these two fields here. What kind of insurance company is that to you? Is it a motor vehicle and extended healthcare? So it would be extended. And then how are you going to be submitting it? What type of invoice is it that we have to submit? And this is where the setup is very important, especially if you're from Ontario, but all across Canada, for setting up the type of submission that you're going to be sending. So TELUS Health submissions would all go through TELUS Health. Workers' Comp in Ontario might go through WSAB Ontario. It might be a different WCB option for you on the list. If you're from BC, it would be BC Teleplan. So the selection there is key. That's, that's uber important. That's what the system is going to produce for you or what it's going to check for before it tries to bill out to this particular payer. Okay, so I'm going to go back to payers. So all your payers on this list would have to be set up in that manner. So I'm just going to double click on HCI, which is a motor vehicle um, option for Ontario. You would choose motor vehicle as the kind of payer and HCI invoice would be your type of invoice. Okay, it might be OHIP if you're from Ontario. Okay, so that selection is important. Now, in the background of a payer, there are some tabs. I usually don't focus too, too much on these tabs, but some of them sometimes are important to you. Just know that. There's a data preferences and a billing preferences. A lot of times for my Ontario people, the data preference on your motor vehicle insurance companies, sometimes you tell the system or it's nice to tell the system that you're required to enter a diagnostic code. If that's something you're going to need to bill, tell the system I'm required to enter that so that you don't forget to do so when you're entering charges. I can kind of force you to do that. Okay, so that's kind of the first setup and that is in our previous sessions. I just wanted to point it out because it really is important. The second part of your setup usually comes from your providers of service and that's under housekeeping, contacts, and providers of service, all your therapists, basically your entire clinical team in here. When you're setting up a provider in the system, you also need some minimum details. You need name, you need first name, last name, you're probably going to need credentials, you're probably going to need a license number, and you definitely have to put the province and the country if you're billing to tell us. Anywhere in Canada, you're going to need your province and your country to do that. Okay. And then the next part of your setup is usually all your fee codes. You're going to be telling the system what services you're going to be charging for and how much you're going to be charging for those. And that's part of session number one for setup, but that's where your fee codes come from. Those fee codes that you're setting up, 
now have a very specific setup in the settings section. The settings section is very specific about what needs to be set up for h -Kime, our Ontario Motor Vehicle uh, Submissions, OHIP, Workers' Comp Ontario, ICBC has a very specific setup for their three payers of MSP, Workers' Comp, and ICBC. And then TELIS for all of Canada has a very specific setup. So we're going to go into these very quickly, but know that the concept of them is almost identical. What you need for the setup is almost the same for all the different types of payers, all the different types of submissions. So if we look at this one here, the TELUS health invoice settings, this is kind of the first step for integration. And integration means you want to send this information from Practice Perfect directly rather than having to log into the website to enter the billing for a patient. So the first tab, your general tab, um, the first thing you have to do, obviously, of course, is register with TELUS Health. You have to be able to get some kind of um, spreadsheet from them where your clinic information is listed on the spreadsheet. It'll have all your therapists that you've registered. It'll have your clinic information. It'll assign you specific numbers. And that's what this general tab actually needs from you. So if you have multiple locations, you'll just simply highlight the location that you're setting up. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll need to fill in the fields um, indicating your facility number. That's actually a number that we will give you. So if you don't know what your facility number is, we will actually assign that to you directly at Practice Perfect. But the rest of this information comes from your spreadsheet. So when you sign up with TELUS Health, they'll send you a spreadsheet with all these details. These details basically help them recognize your clinic when you submit billing to them. So they'll assign you something called a CPR organization ID, your work location. They'll give you a username and a password to use for this billing integration. So this is what the first tab basically needs. The second tab is a list of all of your fee codes. So I'm going to try to draw on my screen here. So your fee codes that you've set up in Practice Perfect will all appear on the left-hand side of the screen. It doesn't matter what you call your fee codes, what coding system you've used, that's completely up to you. What's important to know is that TELUS will actually not receive or see this list of items on the left. They will actually be receiving what we set up on the right. So it's kind of like a translation of your fee codes. So what happens on each individual fee code? So let's say assess is a fee code that I'm internally using. And I've set that up to be $100 per 60 minutes. On the right-hand side for TELUS, we have to tell TELUS that when we submit this, it's called an e-claim. It just means an electronic claim. We're transmitting it directly to them. And on the right-hand side is a very specific code that TELUS uses to uh, represent a assessment. They have a different code, actually, that represents physio assessment as opposed to massage assessment as opposed to chiro assessment. So they have their own coding system. And that's what's happening on the right-hand side. You're basically translating your code. You're saying, when I submit this code on the left, it's an e-claim, and it's this code on the right to you, TELUS. And you'll notice when we go into HCI or to ICBC or to OHIP even or to um, any of the other specific uh, payers that we can integrate with, you'll notice they all have their own coding for these codes. And that's basically what you're putting on the right. Okay. The next tab is a list of all your providers. And typically, most of your payers, if you're submitting electronically, most of your payers want to know the payer identifier number for that particular provider. In this case, it's called a CPR provider number. It's a number that TELUS has associ uh, sorry, associated to them, which college or association they're affiliated with, and what role you have them or discipline you have them registered at. And then the third tab for TELUS specifically is where you connect the payer. And what that means, again, is we don't show TELUS anything that's happening on the left. That is your list of payers coming from the payer list over on the left-hand side. So when you set up a payer, in theory, it doesn't matter how you've entered that payer, what name you've chosen to, to call it. You might have called it Sun Life Financial. You might have called it Sun Life. So we don't show them what's happening on the left. 
which means on the right hand side, you have to translate it. You have to pick which of the official insurance companies registered with TELUS that is. And TELUS at least provides us this nice little list of all the payers that they're connected to or they have registered officially with them. And they'll have the little asterisks on the right hand side. Okay. And the little asterisk just means that's an official payer. So if I'm saying this extended healthcare TELUS Canada that I have listed on the left is actually Canada Life, I just select that from the list. Okay, and that list does change, by the way. Every time we get notified of a new payer, um, we modify the system and add that payer into the list for you. Okay, and then okay to get out of there. So that's kind of the basic setup. And I focused a little bit on the settings, TELUS settings, because now when you go back at your clinic and go to your specific province settings, you'll notice that they're kind of exactly the same. If we go into HCI as an example, all the motor vehicle setup that we need for Ontario, it's the same concept. You have the same types of tabs running across the type of the screen, a top of the screen, and the general tab is the same kind of thing. It's all the numbers that are registered to your clinic with HCI that recognize you as the clinic. They don't like your fee codes ever that are usually on the left-hand side. You have to map them or associate them on the right-hand side. You have to tell HCI a little bit more information in terms of what category this code is, but they, at the end of the day, have a special coding that only they use, and that's all that they want to deal with. So that's what you enter on the right. The providers of service are still a list of all your therapists, all your practitioners, and you're basically telling them which discipline you have them registered as and what number has HCI associated to them. And then the payer list, same kind of concept. They're not going to like the names of your payers on the left. They want to know officially what they call the payer. And in HCI in Ontario, they actually use numbers to do that rather than words. Okay, but if you have any specific questions in here, if you want specific written instructions of how to set things up for your clinic in your province, um, if you're about ready to bill for HCI, just let me know and I'll send you that information for sure. I can even pop it up here on the screen for you. But that's kind of the gist of it. The settings are kind of intense and they come from the settings area. There are very specific requirements HCI asks for before you can submit to them. Same with workers' comp and OHIP. Same with ICBC, MSP, workers' comp and TELUS. It's all basically the same thing. They all want their own codes. They all want their own numbers. Okay, so then eventually what happens then is you connect those payers to patients. So this yellow appointment that I have on my screen, I just set up a fake patient. His name is Test Mr. Extended Healthcare Partial Coverage. And I'm going to hit the enter button on my keyboard just to show you the profile of information that I've set up. So I've got some very basic details, name, address, phone number. In his incident tab, I've told the system who his primary provider is, his division, what color he should be probably when I'm booking the appointments. But the most, in part of, uh, mo most important part of his setup is actually this billing rule. That's the connection to his insurance company. So I've got that insurance company, my extended healthcare TELUS Canada insurance company connected to them. And I've said they have partial coverage. They have 80% coverage in my scenario up until $500, and it's all going to expire on this date. Okay. You don't need to put a percentage in. I'm just showing you an example that you can track percentages in Practice Perfect. This particular billing rule would split my, my responsibility. If I charged $100 today, it would think $80 of it is supposed to go to insurance and 20 is supposed to go to the patient. Okay, so TELUS specifically, because that is all across Canada, when you connect a TELUS payer to a patient, you also get this little section down here. This only happens for TELUS. And that little section is your consent forms. For those of you who are logging in directly onto TELUS's website to submit, um, you're probably very aware that you have to get your patients to sign two authorization forms typically, and usually one is a benefit assignment. Where is the payment going to? If the payment is going directly to the clinic, then you have to get them to sign a consent form for that. And the other one is to be able to transmit their charges for them on their behalf, and that's your transmission authorization and consent form. So those forms pop 
pop up automatically in Practice Perfect in the patient's in uh, billing rules tab. And typically what you have to do here, um, I'll show you actually, I'm gonna highlight for you what, what you're actually looking for are these two little tick boxes. Um, our system cannot transmit or TELUS would reject your transmission if it did not have two little tick boxes there for your consent forms. These little tick boxes basically mean I have printed out those consent forms, had my patient sign and read them. Um, they are on file and that's how TELUS would receive your claim. You can manually just tick those boxes. If you're gonna to go to the website and print your own consent forms, that's fine. But it, to get those boxes to tick from Practice Perfect automatically, you just have to populate the consent form. So you just have to highlight the little bar here on the right, click it, and then say preview it. And then you'll see that it's grabbed a lot of the patient information, policy, claim number, address, that kind of stuff. And you actually have to print it. So once you actually send that form to the printer, it'll tick the box automatically on the left-hand side, okay? Otherwise, you can just print it yourself. I'm sorry, I activated my printer there, if you can hear that. Otherwise, you can just print it yourself and then tick the box manually. But if you send it to the printer, it will automatically go ahead and do that. But just note, that is an important field. You must have those things ticked if you're gonna submit those over to TELUS. Okay, while we're in the profile for TELUS, I'm actually gonna go back a couple of subtabs here to the statistics tab, because this field here um, called the injury date, which you are probably filling out for your motor vehicles and your workers' comps anyways, but believe it or not, TELUS requires that field. When you're gonna transmit your charges from Practice Perfect, it requires an injury date. We do get lots of questions. What if I don't have an actual injury date with my patient? What date am I supposed to put there? So I just wanted to clarify, TELUS isn't really saying what that date has to represent or what that date actually means. They're just saying that that field has to be completed. So from my understanding, the instruction is you might want to use the assessment date if you don't actually have a particular date with your patient, but it will not transmit if that is blank. Just an FYI. Okay, and then once you fill out the billing rule, you also have policy claim details, and you're going to complete the policy number, you're going to have an ID number for that patient as well, it's usually under 25 characters, um, but that's the identifying numbers to tell us for that client. Okay, so let's go back to the scheduler then, it's my yellow appointment that I'm focusing on here. So typically what happens on that patient is the whole four-step process to get to this point, right? We've booked the appointment, we've said this patient arrived or completed, we've charged them for a service which is with the little white hand, right? We've charged them for some kind of service. And that service is either fully charging the insurance company or in my scenario, it's actually splitting the charge. So for my $100 charge, it's actually sending 80 to insurance, 20 to the patient. And that usually just depends on how we've set up the billing rule. Okay, so once that happens, typically at that point, I would probably do a step three, which is our payment. And I would get my patient to pay for their portion. And I would probably give them some kind of an invoice or receipt for that, right? They would walk away with their piece of paper or I would email it to them as a receipt or an invoice to them. So that would be a four step process for our patient. The other part of this that might happen right away is we might go back to the invoice icon at the top of the screen and we might be wanting now to bill our payer. We might transmit that charge immediately. This might've actually been your first step instead of your fourth step as well, either way. But if you're gonna transmit this directly through Practice Perfect, you're gonna hit the invoice icon and you're gonna make sure that you're billing the insurance. Okay, it's the same screen that you typically get when you're billing a patient directly for services. You're just selecting your options. The big choice here is who's the invoice going to. If this is going to tell us and we've set everything up correctly, we should see a send button over here, not a print button. So typically for a patient or any insurance company that we can't transmit electronically, we're going to get a post and print button. And our only option is to send it to paper. If it's an electronic submission, we're going to get a send button. So that's a good sign. 
we don't typically want to send that right away without looking at it. So preview is always the best choice. And in a preview, this is called um, a submission report. So this will look very similar if you're billing HCI, your Ontario Motor Vehicle Billing, Workers' Comp Ontario, uh, ICBC, MSP, Workers' Comp, anything that's going to go electronically, basically, even OHIP, you're going to get a uh, submission report like this. And what this report is doing is it's trying to point out on the left-hand side all the patients, all the services that you're getting ready to bill with the coding that's going to be showing to that insurance company. And the right-hand side of the screen is going to be telling you a comment. So if a comment is there, if that comment basically is anything other than ready to submit, there's probably an issue. And usually that comment will point out what the issue is. It might say something like your patient is missing their birth date. Uh, this is a TELUS claim. They need an injury date. It's missing or invalid. Okay. So this is kind of like a preview before you send it. So our system is doing what we call a level one preview. It's not checking to make sure that you have the correct birth date or the correct claim number. It's just checking to make sure you have a birth date if you need a birth date. Okay, so the first check is have a look, see if there's any comments, see if there's anything telling you that something's missing. If there is, there's a good chance you're going to get a rejection if you try to submit this. So the best process would be to stop, depending on what that message is, stop, exit, close out of here, stop the process and go back and fix whatever's missing. So that in itself has a few different instructions. If you can't figure out where to go to fix your message, make sure you call us at support. Um, but it does depend on what the message says. So an example might be if it's a birth date or something, you might go to the patient's profile and then go find out where the birth date is. If it's telling you you're missing, I don't know, claim number or something, it's probably buried somewhere here in the, pro in the profile. Sometimes the message is telling you that your unit count is off um, or it could be it could be something like your visit or unit count is invalid. Um, a lot of times that'll come from your fee code. It's basically saying that whatever fee code in here that you're trying to charge for is missing something. It's missing a visit count or you're not charging it the way that they would like you to charge by the visit, flat fee, by the minute, whatever. Okay, so if you have any specific questions about errors that are coming up in your clinic, just let us know at support. We'll have a look at your computer. But in general, that submission report will tell you hopefully what's wrong before you submit it. Okay. So back to the schedule, we're going to get started. So if I'm working on that patient and immediately they've checked in, I've charged them, I go to the envelope icon to bill them, and I've gone through my preview and I've tried to fix up all these messages and I hit the send button, two things will happen. It will either send and right away you'll get a submission report printout and you'll also get an EOB, an explanation of benefits, or sometimes it's called, um, I think it's called a claim acknowledgement form and that'll print out right away telling you that it was submitted, uh, this is how much they're going to pay, this is the acknowledgement. Or you'll get a printout saying, nope, sorry, it still didn't go through, there's an error message and it will tell you what the error message is. Okay, so either one of those two things will happen. So in the background of your patient, I'm staying on my yellow appointment right now. I'm going to go to activities by service, the little book with the hand, just to point out a couple of services up top here. Um, this bottom service has already been submitted. I'm just trying to point out that the top two services have not been submitted to tell us yet. So how you'll know that if you, maybe your printer ran out of paper and you didn't get that submission report, when you look to the right-hand side, the amount of that charge should show as built. So on the line that I've highlighted, I just want to point out 100 was charged, 100 was built. So when I expand that service, I should be able to find the official invoice that was submitted to TELUS Health. Okay, the top line that I've just highlighted right now, I'm going to pretend that that line did not get submitted. That was an error message. It didn't go through. If you look to the right, only the $20 of that $100 has been billed. If I expand it, I can kind of see what's happened down here. I can see that my patient got their portion of it only, but the $80 of it didn't quite go to TELUS just yet. 
Okay, so no invoice would be submitted. So that will just stay forever on a report, letting us know that that never got billed. We have to fix it up. We have to send it out. Okay, so that's how we bill individually for a specific patient. And since I'm here, I'm just going to flip. Actually, I'll go back to the scheduler and I'm going to pick on, who am I going to pick on? I'm going to pick on someone else. I'm going to go to my purple appointment down here, my Mr. Non-Ontario Workers Comp. So I'm going to go into his activities by service. These are a bunch of services I've entered. I can individually stay here on this patient and flag all the services that I feel like billing right now and then go to my invoice icon and then do a preview and see what I'm about to bill. So you'll see that this invoice now looks very different to the one that we just looked at for TELUS. And that's because I have a different payer connected to this patient. And on that payer, I've selected the style of invoice for the province, Alberta. Okay, so that's a paper invoice they're gonna get. Okay, so that connection to the payer and how you've set up that payer is really important. Okay, so let's talk about some crazy stuff that happens in Ontario a little bit real quick. Um, I'm going to say workers' comp, POC, and motor vehicle MIG, minor injuries guideline. So for those of you calling in from Ontario, hopefully those acronyms, that language makes sense to you. I'm going to say that that type of billing is probably the most complicated of billing to do in Ontario. Basically, how that works is um, you're going to want to set up two different fee codes. So, in your financial fee code section, you're going to want to set up a fee code um, called a visit tracker. You don't actually have to call it that. But in essence, what that code is going to do is it's going to keep track of every time a patient comes in. This, in fact, would work for any clinic who has like a buy 10 get two free kind of card or a gym membership or something for a patient is when you want to charge them um, a big fee one time but you want to keep track of all the visits that they actually attend that's in essence what happens in two programs in Ontario called a POC and a MIG so you want to set up a fee code that's going to keep track of all the individual visits call it attendance call it visit tracker call it whatever you want um, it'll be set as a visit count of one, and it probably will have no price to it. You're not going to be charging the patient every time you use that code or any time you use that code. Okay. In addition to that, you're going to have another code that you set up that will actually charge for the big bulk fee amount. So in Ontario, you have your block one, block two, block three for your motor vehicles. You have a POC, a big block that you charge. You might have a monthly gym membership or something that you charge. It's a fee code that's set up not as a visit necessarily at first, more of a quantity, a thing, and it's going to have a bigger amount to it. And that amount will probably be a flat fee. Okay. So in essence, what's going to happen is I'm going to charge my patient visit, visit, visit every time they come in so that I can keep track of how many visits they're actually attending. And then when I feel that they're done the block or whatever that threshold is, a certain number of visits or once a month or something, I'll charge them the block fee. Okay, so let's have a look back in the schedule. Let's have a look at uh, what that might look like. So I think I've set up my scenario down here on my pink appointment, my test motor vehicle MIG patient. I'm just going to go into their activities by service. Yes, this is sort of how I set them up. So what's happening here, if you look on my screen, I'll highlight it as I go. Each day the patient shows up for their appointment, I'm charging them a fee code. I'm still using the little white hand, step two, to charge them, but my charge is zero. It's a fee code that's keeping track of how many visits they've attended. And likely why I want to do that sometimes is because I have a certain number of visits that I'm allowed or that patient is allowed to attend before they hit a threshold, before I charge the block. So I, as an example, maybe I want to keep track of um, my patient has 12 visits and then I got to build block one. So I want the system to keep track of all those visits that they have left or how many they've used. And it does that every time they show up, it uses up a visit. 
And then when they're done the visit, I charge my block fee, whatever or whatever fee code I've called it, but my, my fee code that charges an amount of money as a lump sum. Okay. Now, different programs, especially in Ontario, different programs have very different requirements for that. So in the motor vehicle program, it actually wants to see all those zero fees. It wants to see all the dates of service that the patient attended on the invoice plus the block, whereas the workers' comp program doesn't want to see all those individual dates of service where they attended that you're charging zero. It just wants you to keep track of that. It doesn't want to see that on the invoice. So behind the scenes, there's certain ways to set that kind of stuff up. One of the things that we can do in the settings area for workers' comp Ontario specifically is we can tell a particular uh, fee code not to send. So when we transmit that code to them, we untick this little box here on the right-hand side, and that means we're not sending that code. Okay, so we have little tricks along the way for certain codes if we don't want them to actually show up on the invoice. Okay, now individually, since I'm on this patient and I want to bill his services or have a look at them, maybe I'm going to flag all these services I see on my screen and then I'm going to send them to the printer. I'm actually going to hit the envelope icon as if I'm going to bill it and I'm going to have a look at the preview. So this particular preview, oh, I've set him up for HKI, wrong one. But this particular preview, anyways, is my HKI. It thinks I'm submitting HKI right now, so I must have set up my payer as if it thinks it's HKI. But the good news is on the right-hand side, my comments are telling me things that I'm probably missing on this patient, right? I'm missing his birth date, his address, his phone number. It's telling me a list of all the things that I actually need. But if you look to the left-hand side, it's showing me that it's going to transmit those codes plus this code. So all the individual attendance codes plus the block. Okay, so if this was my workers' comp claim, what this submission report would show me is it would show me all the dates of service with the zero fees, but next to it, it would say unsent. And that means it's not going to send them. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of an overview really of how we get things set up, how we connect them to the patient, how we enter the charges and how we individually bill for a patient. There's also going to come lots of times where we want to bulk bill. We want to bill a bunch of people all at the same time. We want to bill maybe all our motor vehicles at the same time. So how we do that just changes where we start from. If we start from the word payers on the left-hand side and start flagging individual payers, then we're only going to be billing the ones that we flag, but all the patients, all the services connected to those payers all at the same time. So it's a faster way to do that. If you have tons of payers listed on your screen and you don't want to have to flag them individually, you can have the system do that. So the two red flag icon, I'm going to highlight it here for you. That is a way to find certain insurance companies by a criteria directly from the system. So the two red flags can do things like, find me all the insurance companies I've got set up that I've said they're motor vehicle or find all the insurance companies that would be going to HKI at the same time. And then the system will go through and flag them for you. Anyone that meets that criteria. Okay, so the first step is always flagging something. Even if you start on the patient directly, flag that patient, flag those services. If you start with the payer listing, flag those payers. So let's pretend, I don't know, let's pretend I'm going to do all my extended health cares at the same time. I would flag them all first. After we flag, the next step is always to pick a function. So I'm going to pick produce invoices. Let's create some billing. And then I have my options. What are the dates? What are my locations? What's the date of my invoice? Do I want to bill everything that there is to bill? I make my selections just like I would make them on a patient okay to move forward. If it finds something, I'll either have the option to send all those things at the same time if I can send it electronically, or I might have a print option. 
I usually always have a preview option. And my preview is going to either be a submission report if it's going electronically telling me things that might potentially be wrong so that I can fix them before I send them. Or I might get a preview of the actual invoice that I'm about to print. Okay, so that's a quick way to do them all at the same time. It just depends on your situation. Okay. And that's the two red flags, find everybody by a criteria. So all these things that haven't been billed yet, we've charged them with the little white hand, but we haven't actually hit this little icon, the envelope icon to produce invoices. Those things in our system are called unbilled, and they stay that way forever until you actually build them. So there's a report under the report section, under the finance section, called your unbilled services. And that's a report as of right now, as of a certain date. And if you have multiple locations, you can ask for this to be combined or just one location as opposed to the other. But it's a list of every single service that isn't yet on a bill, on an invoice. Another word for this is work in progress. Okay, so we suggest this is probably a good thing to look at at least once a month or more typically when you have a bill run. So if I was about to do a bill run today and I think I've billed everything there is to bill, I would probably want to have a look at this report and just make sure there's nothing left on it. Okay, some people look at this report before they bill. Show me all my motor vehicle stuff I'm about ready to bill. Okay, so that's a nice little report to keep an eye on. And that's reports, finances, and then unbilled. Okay, once we bill things, once we move them from charge to build or invoiced, they become accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is basically a list of all the invoices out there. Let's see if I have anything. All the invoices out there that are not yet paid. So it's all your outstanding invoices. And those are aging. So you'll notice we have some aging across the top of the screen. So typically, depending on your threshold at your clinic, of course, but typically that's your threshold. You don't want to let anything go past 60 days. Anything in this section is going to be a little bit harder to collect on, right? It's a little bit older. It's aging every day that they haven't paid. So sometimes when you run these reports in the system, you filter by those requirements. You might say, well, I don't need to see everything as of today that isn't paid, but maybe I want to see everything today that 60 days are over that isn't paid. That's what I want to focus on today. So think of this as like a collection report. Okay. And then your other two reports that we focus on daily, those are also really good reports to run at the end of the month, at the end of the week, at the end of every two weeks. And that's your daily reconciliation and your revenue report. So remember, daily reconciliation, why you might choose to run this at the end of the month, let's say, you might run this, I don't know, for a whole month. That particular report, if nothing else, all the other things it's showing you, like here's your revenue, here's all the appointments that you had, the two kind of main things that you're looking at here is do you have a section where it thinks you're missing charges? people showing up for their appointments that we haven't charged because we don't ever want to see that. And then the second part you're looking at is usually the attendance in the scheduler. Nobody should probably still be in a pending status, right? If we're running this for last month, we have to know if a patient canceled, no show showed up by now. And then the amount of people that you have attending, that would be a good match to the number of visits that we've charged. So this report really kind of helps a lot of things balance at a glance. And then you go back and kind of fix some things. Um, something new on this report that just came out in version, I believe it came out in version 559, but don't hold me to that. This little section here now, it's an option when you run the report. And what that section is doing, it's called a time check. And what it's doing is it's checking what time did the patient have scheduled? Did they have a 30-minute, a 60-minute, a 45-minute appointment versus 
the amount of time that's been billed for, and then it would show you a discrepancy. So not, not really applicable to everybody, but if you're the kind of clinic where you have, you know, five hours of people that are booked during the day and you want to make sure that you've billed for five hours worth of services, that's a great option now on the report. And that's called a time check. And that comes from, let me go back to show you the options. Let me just turn on my little highlighter here. It's a new little option before you preview that report. And I believe that came out in 559. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on to payments now. And I do want to uh, focus. Uh, I have a lot of people, I think, calling in from Ontario today. So just so you know, uh, I have to look up the date on this actually, but Carrie is actually going to run a webinar for us. And that webinar is completely and solely just on how to fill out an OCF 18, an OCF 23, and a really look into how to make sure you're submitting an OCF 21 B and C. For those of you not from Ontario, that just probably sounded like a whole bunch of garble that I just said. For those of you calling from Ontario, that would be a really good session for you to attend if you really want to dive deep just strictly on Ontario billing uh, for HKI, basically. And I believe that's coming up on the 24th or the 31st. And I'll, if you're interested, put something in the chat box for me and I'll have Michelle send you some more information on that. But it's one of our Wednesdays for sure. Okay, so uh, quickly before we go into question and answers, I just want to show you now about payment. So this is kind of how to pull it all together, what we've done so far, how to make sure our payers set up right, how we can get that transmitted quickly out to some of our payers rather than having to log into a website. And then uh, hopefully we're going to get some payments from that, right? We're going to get bulk payments. We're going to get single payments. So what that means is however we decide or however we get the check, maybe Blue Cross is going to send us this big, huge check and it's going to pay for tons of people at the same time. We call that bulk payment. Or TELUS is going to say that we got paid $50 for this one patient for this one charge and it just went in your bank account. We call that a single pay. So it's all about how you start. So I'm going to stay in payers because we just talked about bulk billing for payers. It would be the same for bulk paying. So I'm going to pretend my Mr. Extended Healthcare Telus Canada payer here has sent me a huge check and they've said it's going to pay for a whole whack of patients. So I would go to the payer to do that and flag the payer. From there, because we flagged, we always pick a function now from the top of the screen. And the function I personally would pick, I'm going to highlight it here for you, is activities by invoice. I would go to the list of invoices that I have sent that payer because likely they're not going to be paying me for anything unless I've sent it to them as an invoice, right? So that's a list of all the invoices that I've sent to that payer. Hopefully I have something in there to look at. Okay, not exciting, but I have one thing. So usually in here, there'd be a whole whack of patients. A whole, maybe there's hundreds of them. You would start flagging all those patients or those invoices. So when you get that payment, they usually say, here you go, here's $10,000, and it's going to pay for invoice number 1510-2030. So that's what you would do in here, flag invoice number 1510-2030. And once you flag, you always pick another function now, and our function now would be to pay. Let's pay them all together. Now, this isn't too exciting because I only have one patient, but there could be hundreds of patients here, hundreds of services that I'm paying all at the same time. So I start at the top, work my way down. What's my date? What's my method? How much did I actually get paid? So the system assumes they'll pay what you bill, so put the real amount in here. Do I need a check number, some kind of EFT number for reference? Maybe yes, maybe no. So the most important part is how much did I get paid? So I'm going to draw on the screen here. So this amount has to eventually equal this column called the apply total column. That column is saying, where do you want to apply that amount of money? Okay. So one scenario, nice and easy, is that what they paid is actually what I built. So that means my whole 80 is going onto this line. You build $80, they're paying $80, there's no balance. Another scenario might be partial payments. This happens a lot when you have a motor vehicle patient and you have to exhaust their extended health care first. The extended health care might not pay for the whole thing. 
So let's say my scenario up here is $50 as my payment. Then I would say $50 is what I'm applying. That leaves me a balance. Usually when you have a balance, you're going to move it on, transfer it to somebody else. And it all depends on how you've set the patient up. Typically, your option is move it back to the patient. Maybe there's a deductible. Maybe they were denied. Maybe there's a copay or something we didn't know about. Or move it on to another insurance company. So you would say move it on to the next payer, which, of course, my patient doesn't have. Okay. So that's typically when you're paying something in bulk. You're taking this big bulk amount, applying it to all the people, all the invoices, all the charges, any balances. You're moving on to either the payer, another payer, back to the patient, wherever it's supposed to go. On the right-hand side, the number of payers that a patient has is following them around in this screen on the right. Your number is either going to be one, two, or three. So one means they only have a single payer, which means you're on the only payer they have. If the number was two, you can move it on to their second insurance or maybe their third insurance. Okay, so that's called a bulk payment. So let's talk about a single payment now. I'm going to cancel that. A single payment just means you're going to go to a client. I'm going to pick on, who am I going to pick on? I'll pick on Mr. Self Pay here. So go find your patient on your client listing, find them in the scheduler, find them wherever you can find them. And once you're on their name, flag them. And now go to their activities by service. Look at all the services you have available to pay. If you're going to pay for multiple services, just start flagging them. Which ones on the list do you want to pay for? If you're paying for one, just flag one. Okay. And then once you've flagged, the next function is always, uh, sorry, the next step is always pick a function. What do you want to do with those flag services? You want to pay them. I'm going to get the same screen. But in this screen now, I can only possibly pay for this one patient, right? I'm in Mr. Self Pay. The only things I'm going to see here are for Mr. Self Pay, but I can still pay for bulk services all at the same time. So it's exactly the same process. Fill in the date, fill in the method, fill in how much they're paying me, and the amount that they're paying me is going to be applying in that column. Okay, so that's called a single pay, a single patient pay. Another alternative, I'm just going to flag one service with one patient and then try to hit my payment icon. Oh, let me simulate it actually in this scheduler. So Mr. Self pay my white appointment here. If I'm using the scheduler and I use the payment icon from the scheduler and I don't have my settings set up to say always oh, show me that big payment screen you might be used to the payment screen looking like this or it's very simple you're just paying for one thing usually one date of service and it's nice and easy so the multiple payment screen comes up automatically when you have multiple things multiple services multiple patients multiple things you're paying at the same time if you want to see the multiple screen at all times i believe it's a setting in our customized accounting section and one of these guys down here says, this one here, always use multiple service payment panel. And then that'll help it pop up all the time when you're not in the scheduler. Okay, so let's talk about our reports again real quick in the finances. Anything that you charge a patient, that little white hand that's charging, until you bill it, it's called unbilled. As soon as you bill it, it becomes accounts receivable. It's an invoice out there that hasn't been paid. As soon as you pay it, it moves out of there and goes down to the payment journal. So you're trying to get things as fast as possible to the payment journal. That would complete the whole process. Okay, and then the payment journal, you run this every day. Sometimes you run this every week, every two weeks, every month. Um, you can sort this very different ways. You can ask for summaries. You can say, show me everything. Show me just this payer. Show me just this patient. You can kind of get... You know, 50 different results based on what you filter. But this report in general is tracking every single payment, who entered it, where it was for, what date it was entered, the method, and you're balancing this usually against your bank. Okay. If you want a much more detailed report as to where the payment actually paid, like the payment journal would say, this patient just gave us a check of $100 it was posted by Heather on the 4th. 
But if you want a report that says, well, where did the hunter go? Was part of it unapplied? Was part of it towards these two services as opposed to those two services? That report is under finances and it's called your payment application report. It tells you where the money was attached to or where it was applied to. And that particular report, again, as of or between this date range, run this by the date of the payment or the date you applied it, filter, 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 depending on what you're looking for. And it's just a more detailed report. It says that $20 payment actually paid for this, that, and the other thing. Okay. One last tip and trick of the way, this is really just for the uh, Ontario team. When you're billing, hopefully I have an example here. When you are billing, let's say a motor vehicle patient, so somewhere in their activities by service, you have billed motor vehicle, and usually that's transmitting a charge, or maybe you have printed a piece of paper and gone to the website or something to bill it, but hopefully moving forward, you're transmitting. If you ever want to reprint that invoice or see what it looked like um, on an OCF 21, a little tip or trick sometimes to do that is find the invoice on the screen, flag it, go to the printer icon, and don't choose the original format because that was probably your electronic submission, your submission report, um, a generic normal piece of paper. If you choose this one here, AISI invoice style, and then do a preview, I believe that'll show it to you as if it was on an OCF 21, just so you know. And that is the whole training session. Carrie's gonna do a whole webinar session just on Motor Vehicle Ontario because it can be so complicated. Okay. Okay, guys, so hopefully I have addressed at least a big overview um, in the system about how you can transmit now to some of those big entities that maybe you've been printing paper and sending manually, maybe you've been going to the website, um, what's involved with some of that setup. We definitely have some very involved training videos on those, very specific how-tos. We have some written instructions. I'm just shooting you back here to the Learning Center. Um, and let's see what I can show you in here. Okay, so this um, screen that I'm on right now is our integrated forms screen, and you can get that within Practice Perfect. If you go to the Help menu, and then you go to Integrated Forms, this is where it'll take you, and you can actually download some of the forms uh, pertaining to the uh, to Canada and the each individual province. So if you go to Ontario as an example, you can actually download the forms for workers' comp, the Form 6, the FAF, the, the Form 8, the OCF 18, the 23 if you want it on paper. You can actually download those directly to your computers. And we have those basically for each province. Not too much are people doing this, um, I would say, much more because now you have the whole TELUS platform to the Canadian Extended Healthcare Insurance forms here, that would it used to be the, the the forms that you would have a patient fill out to submit to TELUS, right? Or their claim form for Blue Cross or Green Shield or United or something. So you can still download them, yes, for sure, if you want to keep them on hand. Usually nowadays you can just send them through the website or just transmit electronically. Um, the other area on our website here that I just want to show you is actually the web version real quick, if I have it. Yep, so this is our web version. Um, so I just want to point out, this is the lighter version of the software. You can easily see the scheduler. It looks very familiar to what I've been showing you all day. But I just want to point out, you cannot really do the kind of stuff that we did today on the web version. That's your function bar. You'll notice that there isn't a printer, there isn't a payment icon, there isn't an envelope to invoice anyone. So the lighter version of the software, the web app version, is a great tool for um, scheduling and you know charging patients, marking their attendance, documenting electronically as well. But you can't really do a whole lot of the billing and paying from that platform. So I just wanted to point that out. And then the other place I want to show you in the system is our release listings. And this tells you when the latest release is being launched and what's, in, what's included and, and how you can take advantage of it. So I showed you 559 today. There's actually two more releases that just came out. They're very, very big releases. They're very involved for an update. You actually have to book an appointment with support to help you through that. But they also have some really great stuff in them. 
So you might want to take advantage of that. For what I showed you today is version 559. So when you click on that version, it actually tells you some of the things that are now included in that update. So if you're not on 559, that's still an easy update. You can update that on your own or we can help you do that as well. But it just shows you all the things that have changed on that um, version. And one of the things is what I showed you today in your daily reconciliation report, you can now ask for time checking. Okay. So that is the end of our session today, guys. Thanks for attending. If you do have any specific questions at all on anything we've talked about, anything I didn't talk about that you're really hoping I was going to bring up, uh, like I said, feel free to chat. Feel free to take yourself off of mute. Ask me a question out loud if you'd like. Shoot me an email uh, separately. That's all fine, too. And these sessions are all recorded. Uh, my screen only, it's recorded. So we do put those up on our website so you can watch them anytime you want. Thanks, guys. Thanks for attending. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. And for those of you, by the way, who did chat with me in the chat box about signing up for the motor vehicle, uh, billing session with Carrie. I definitely have your information. I will be sending that to um, Michelle and Carrie for you. So they'll be sending you some information about how to sign up for that.